So today I'm going to show you how it went from making ice axes that bent when you use them to ice axes oh, that can do anything. Look at that. Mainly ice climb. They can even double dino. They can also figure four. They'll also hold you up when you fall. They even print Oh my money. god, look at all the money! No guarantee. Show me the money. The first part of this process involved finding an image of an ice pick that was shot perpendicular to the face. This was way more difficult than I thought as most marketing photography is shot at an angle to show off the teeth. When I did find one, I placed it on my flat steel, then used a nail to trace it out. You can see here, the markings of the nail gave me a rough idea of where I needed to cut. This flat bar was two inches by one eighth. For those of you who haven't used an angle grinder, I basically did really light passes to get a groove going. Once I got the groove going, I could let the weight of the tool do the work for me. Cutting acute angles with an angle grinder is not easy. The bottom side of the pick was probably the hardest to cut because of the curvature on the image I used. Most of these picks are actually cut using a water jet, which is extremely powerful and extremely precise, way more than freehanding with an angle grinder. To get the sharper angle on the bottom, I ended up cutting two linear lines, then putting on a thicker plate and cleaning it up. I then went on to cut the top part of the pick. And there it was born, my first ever ice pick cutout. Little did I know, it would utterly fail. After cutting with an angle grinder, it is really, really messy. So I took it over to the bench grinder and cleaned up all the burrs that were created. This would create a more workable edge and something that won't get stuck on your clothing, flesh, and other items. And now it was time to make the teeth. I clamped down my ice pick cutout, got my visual aid ready, and realized there's no way I was gonna be able to mimic those teeth because all I could make were linear cuts against an angle. This was going to be impossible to replicate the Petzl ice pick that I had found. So I began a series of linear cuts facing into the pick. This is to help with the initial cut into the ice, or so I thought. I then started cutting into the back side of the teeth to make space for the ice to actually go in. Creating teeth is extremely precise and extremely difficult. There's so much geometry that goes into creating saw teeth that freehanding it with an angle grinder is not really on many people's lists to do in a lifetime. However, I used the tools I had. Now it was time to start working my way down and creating teeth that went the opposite way. So at first I wanted the teeth to sink in and pierce the ice. Then I wanted the next set of teeth to grab the ice so when you pull on it, it won't come out and will feel secure. Again, this was really difficult to do freehanded and never having cut teeth before let alone having done zero metal work before I've done this as well. So I ended up creating more of what looked like wood cutting teeth. I then got my Dremel tool and cleaned up the inside of the teeth. Can you guess what I did next? Took it over to the angle grinder. This time I wanted to create an angle on the teeth so that they would actually cut down, almost looking like a knife. I truthfully don't know if this was going to help, but it seemed like a good idea. It was now time to make the handle, so I got some aluminum steel tubing at 3 quarters of an inch and just cut it off to a size that I felt was appropriate for me. I then took it over to guess what, the bench grinder.
the next step was to cut a slit down the middle of the tube. This would allow me to place the pick that I made directly in there, flatten it out, and screw it in. It took a little bit of finagling to get it in there, but eventually I think I got the angle I wanted. There's so much geometry to ice axes, it shocked me. I then pounded very delicately, very precisely, the steel so that it would lay flat against the pick so that I could screw it in. I then took it over to the drill press and drilled two holes on a linear line down the center of my tubing. Boom! The stainless steel screw fits great. I then go on to drill the second hole very precisely because this would set the angle at which the pick will sit forever. I then used a locking washer, a regular washer, and some locking nuts. Then it was time to send this baby home. Oh, but we're not quite done yet. I drilled some holes to thread some power cord through so that I could create a handle. Because if you've ice climbed, ice is wet. I went and grabbed my power cord. I threaded it through the holes I created, tied a knot, pulled it tight, and started wrapping it around the steel tube. In hindsight, this is one of the things I would have changed. Using a regular wrap creates a smooth surface, even though it is rougher than the original steel. I would have chosen to do a braided power cord, providing optimal friction for awesome ice climbing. It was about 40 degrees that day, and using a hot plate alone was not enough to boil the water to cinch down the power cord. So I got my heat gun out, like any logical person, and it didn't work either. With the extra heaters, I finally had boiling water. An hour later. I dipped the power cord into the water for 15 to 25 seconds. This is essentially the equivalent of shrinking a shirt. This will cause the power cord to wrap tighter around the steel pole, creating a better handle. And there you have it, my first ice axe. I took it out for a little testing. I hooked it on the tree and hung on it. It worked. In hindsight, it was because I created wood cutting teeth. And man, if it could hang on a tree, oh, then it could definitely hang on ice. And if it could cut through sheetrock, man, it could definitely cut through ice. And here we are, back at the very beginning, with bent ice axes and eight hours worth of work for two axes quickly diminished by Mother Nature. And I thought to myself, what did I do wrong? Well, as it turns out, most ice axes are not made from flat bar steel that they purchased at Home Depot. However, it was good to find out that the steel tubing I bought worked great. After a bit of research, I found on the Grivel website that they are made out of chrominium malbadenerua. I'm not even going to try. They call it chromoly for short. This steel is significantly stronger and more weatherproof. But even with my new information, I still had the issue of finding a great outline of a pick. So I headed over to my local store, Black Dome. Let me say for the record, I am in no way, shape, or form associated with Black Dome. I went into their store and they kindly let me trace the ice axes they rent out during ice season. So if you're in Asheville and you want to climb some ice and you need to rent some gear, go to these guys. They are awesome. Not only that, but I was able to bring my calipers to get exact dimensions of how thick the axes were, how large the handles were, and other critical elements of developing an awesome ice axe. And from this process, I learned about my second mistake, and that was the thickness of the ice axe. 
the flat bar steel that I had purchased was 1 8 of an inch or 3.18 millimeters. Ice axes that are professionally manufactured range from 4 millimeters thick to 5 millimeters thick. With that new information in hand, I went on to onlinemetals.com, bought some 4 millimeter alloy steel chrome molly, and we were off to the races. Of course, it was adding to my costs. I quickly made a jig by screwing two 2x6s together. I then marked out about an inch width, took my circular saw and made several cuts so that I had a groove my blade could go through as I started to cut my new plate of steel. I adjusted the depth of the circular saw so that it would take a larger bite with each pass. This would reduce heat and damage to my blade and the steel itself. I wanted to make a template that was more permanent than paper this time. I made a photocopy of a pick that I traced, glued it to some scrap wood I had in the shop, and then took it over to the scroll saw and cut it out. I will now have this broad template for a very long time, and it's significantly more durable than paper. In addition, I also had the opportunity to improve my tracing process as I bought an acrylic marker, which made this process way easier. So now I had the right width, the right length, and the right shape for making an awesome blade. I cut out the steel using the same methodology I did before. The only difference was I had better angle grinding plates. The biggest difference in this methodology compared to the previous one was my method in making the teeth. Two big differences occurred. The first was that I measured the distance between the top of the tooth and the top of the ice axe to make sure it was thick enough. I then was that I noticed these teeth stair-stepped, so I bought a very large 5mm angle grinding plate that I could just push in and slowly grind more and more away to create a stair effect. I also used the bench grinder to get that stair stepping effect and really hone it in. I screwed them together and now they were ready for testing. All right, here it is, the infamous sheet rock test. Then it was time to take it outside because we had two freezing nights and I needed to see if they worked. Oh, survive! Try that! Oh. Ah! I know what you're wondering. How much did this all cost? Well, after all research and development was completed, it was $182.28. When you look at the components of the first ice axe, it cost $22.63 per axe. When you break down the components of the ice axe that worked, it was $35.59. Somebody asked me, I wouldn't trust your life to those. And I said to them, I made them. Of course I would trust my life to them. I'm on top rope, bro. There are a few adjustments I would make. One, I would use braided paracord. It would give additional friction because when I was trying to figure four, my hand was slipping off. I would also add a weight to the end of the pick. When you swing a professionally made ice axe, you can tell that the driving force is in the back of the hammer, so to speak. Mine is lacking that, so it takes an incredible amount of human energy to smash that baby into the ice. I would also add a bend to the shaft. The reason those ice axes are bent is to keep your hands from getting smashed into the ice as you're picking at it. The straight bar design doesn't do that. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching my tutorial. I do want you to keep in mind that if you decide to also make your own ice axes, if you kill yourself, it is not my fault. This is for entertainment purposes only. Thanks a lot, and don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe.